Hi everyone and welcome back to our series of instructional videos on the Mentor EM Eddy Current Instrument. I'm Dan Groninger for GE Inspection Technologies. In this installment we're going to take a close look at conductivity measurement on the Mentor EM, uh, measuring the electrical conductivity of non-ferrous materials is a fairly common application for eddy current, um, particularly common in uh, airframe inspection. Uh, looking uh, One application is uh, looking at uh, lightning struck areas of aluminum skinned aircraft and looking for changes in conductivity which would reflect changes in hardness or brittleness of the material after a lightning strike. You have intense heat that can accompany the lightning strike. Heat treating is something that commonly changes the electrical conductivity. So this is a, a good application for uh, eddy current. Now, before you can measure uh, conductivity with a mentor, you need to have a probe adapter module that is configured to allow you to connect a conductivity probe. For the Mentor EM, that module has one 12 pin LIMO and one 6 pin LIMO. Uh, these are uh, available. Uh, it's a fairly standard uh, option included with the instrument. But if you want to do uh, conductivity inspection and you don't have one of these, you'll have to get the, the module to go with it. So we have a new line of conductivity measurement probes uh, to be used with the, the Mentor EM. Uh, we have a 6-pin to 6-pin LIMO cable for these. So that plugs into there, and it uses input 2 of the Mentor to do the conductivity measurements. Well, the probes are, first of all, uh, we've updated the ergonomics a little bit. They fit the hand very nicely. But the probes have a couple of special features not found in other eddy current probes. Um, the conductivity probes have a thermistor uh, built into the tip of the probe that constantly measures the temperature of the probe and after it's been placed on the material under test the probe comes to the same temperature as the material so we have the whole system uh, hopefully at an equal temperature. Temperature tends to have very drastic effects on the ability to take conductivity measurements. Uh, the mentor by constantly measuring the temperature compensates for those changes and gives you a consistently accurate conductivity measurement of a very wide range of temperatures. Uh, we have an app that's specifically dedicated to conductivity and you notice it uses an airplane struck by lightning. Yeah, that's the, the intended inspection here. And you'll notice this looks completely different than other uh, eddy current apps because we're not really interested in looking at the impedance plane or a strip chart view. We're interested in numerical measurements here. So we have areas laid out to show us the measurement. We have an area of the display uh, dedicated to averaging of readings and that becomes important for comparative measurements. Uh, we can simultaneously measure conductivity and coating thickness. So if the airplane has a layer of paint over top of the aluminum or over top of its base material, as long as the paint is non-conductive, it doesn't impact the test. We compensate for it. And we also we give you both the conductivity reading and a reading of the paint thickness or coating thickness. And as we mentioned before, we're constantly measuring temperature, and that temperature is displayed on a thermometer display right there. Um, also inside the probe is a memory chip that holds the transfer functions to go from eddy current uh, impedance measurements to conductivity and uh, coating thickness measurements. Um, each one of the probes is calibrated on a carefully temperature controlled set of standards here at the factory. Those transfer functions are generated, programmed into the probe. So when you plug your probe into the Mentor, it reads those transfer functions and it will use those for each individual probe in all of its calculations. So the first step in any conductivity measurement is, of course, calibration. I have a standard here, sheet of aluminum with some various plastic shims and so on. But attached up here, I have two conductivity standards 
one at 8.5 IACS, one at 58.81. And if I touch the screen here, I get the menu buttons, and I can see that I've already selected 8.5 and 58.81 as my standard values. Down here in the navigation bar, you'll see a calibration button. Touch calibration. And now I start watching the top of the screen as the instrument will coach me through the calibration process. So it says hold the probe in the air, put it on the high standard, got it, pick up the probe, put it on the lower standard, and he's done calibrating. Okay. So now I believe my aluminum here is about 29% IACS. I got to go back to my 58.81 standard. There we are, 58.7. Go back to my 8.5 standard, 8.5, 8.6. I have some unknown samples here. This first sample is, I believe, titanium. And it certainly is, comes in at 1.02. Yeah. Titanium is one of the few materials that's down in that range of conductivity, very low in conductivity. I have a random aluminum sample here at about 34. And I have a copper alloy here that should be right around 100. 99.6. Okay. Now as we talked about in the before with the lightning strike inspection, uh, if you look at the procedures that come from Boeing or Airbus, the airframe manufacturers, because materials vary a bit from plane to plane or from area of the aircraft to area of the aircraft, the way the procedures work for inspection is you go to a known good area of the airplane. So you pick a, a part of the plane that is similar in construction to the part that you are suspect of, that you want to inspect. You go to a known good area, you collect several samples, several measurements from known good material, you average those together, and you make that the baseline for your inspection. Then you set an alarm a little bit below that and a little bit above that. And because both Boeing and Airbus have very similar inspection procedures in this case, we try to make this easier for the inspector. So rather than having to go take a bunch of readings, write them down on a sheet of paper, drag out the calculator, and average things together, and then set the gates, we've automated all of this. So we come over here to our averaging panel. We say we want to start averaging. It tells us to put the probe down. Pick the probe up. There's our first reading, 29.85. Put the probe down. Pick the probe up, 29.83. Probe down, pick the probe up. We've collected three points so far. The procedure that we wrote this app around uh, requires four points to average. And you'll notice the done button is grayed out. However, when I take my next data point, pick it up, now the done button is available. When I hit done, it averages those points together, shows me the average. On the graphical display at the top of the screen, it puts my average reading right in the center, and it goes plus and minus 1% IACS from there to set some inspection gates. So now as long as my reading is within that range of 29.82 plus or minus 1, the instrument's happy. Um, you'll notice I have a delta reading here underneath and that shows me how much higher or lower than my average the current reading is. Over here in the left corner, upper left, the number in blue, 29.8, 29.9, is the current corrected reading. So that means we've taken a raw conductivity value, we've applied temperature compensation, we've applied liftoff compensation, and that's what we believe the uh, conductivity of that material would be if the material was at 20 degrees Celsius and we were in contact with bare metal. The reading of white underneath that is a raw reading, uh, kind of used for uh, debug purposes. 
Um, for most inspections, you're going to just be looking at the blue number and the comparative reading over here on the side. And you'll notice as I work, my hand has warmed up the probe a little bit. The temperature's changed slightly from the, um, the calibration temperature, and the instrument is correcting for that. Now, if I go over here and I take this other aluminum sample, and if you, you recall, it was 34% uh, IACS. If I take a reading there, I'm off the scale to the right. I've alarmed. You know, my uh, graphical indication's gone red. If I go back to my aluminum sheet, I'm back within the range. Now I'm, uh, now I'm in an acceptable range again. And there's a, a, uh, an audible alarm that's available for the, the instrument. Uh, many of the current connectivity modules have a, a beeper in them. So you could have it beep when that detects something out of range. Uh, if you notice, I have some plastic shims and some tape on my aluminum sample here to simulate paint. Uh, the tape is about seven thousandths of an inch thick. I have the red plastic is two thousandths. So you notice the coating thickness measurement is showing me the thickness of those plastic shims. And I pick up a little bit of air as I get towards the thicker materials. Um, so I had 5, 10, 15, and 20 thousandths thick shims. So again, we're measuring paint layers, 7 thousandths on the tape. Um, if I make the probe very warm, let's say I just put it right on my hand, we'll warm things up a couple of degrees. You'll see the thermometer view climbing as I get warmer and warmer. Once I get five degrees away from the temperature at which I calibrated, the instrument's going to give me a warning about that. There we go. So it says, hey, your temperature's drifted. Um, you might not be as accurate here as you were before. If we go back to our aluminum, we take a quick reading. You'll notice I am fairly far away now. Still not outside of the alarm range, but I'm farther away from that center point than we were right along. If I put my probe and hold it on the aluminum, it's going to cool down again pretty rapidly. And you notice as it cools, my conductivity reading tends to drift. If I pick the probe back up, it measures the balance point in air again. As soon as I put it back down, you'll notice the temperature or the conductivity measurement snaps to a more accurate position. So when you're measuring conductivity from time to time, you do want to pick your probe up, let the instrument sense where the, the balance point of the probe is in air, and then put it back down on your part and continue to take measurements. So as opposed to some other surface measurements where you might plunk your probe down and slide it around, you don't want to do that with a conductivity probe. You want to pick it up and put it down. Okay, and that is most of what there is to know about uh, conductivity measurement. Um, our app does support measuring conductivity at uh, several different frequencies. Most all work with the half inch conductivity probe is going to be done at 60 kilohertz. Um, for thin materials or uh, materials with complex construction, uh, if you're primarily interested in the surface conductivity, you may want to choose one of the higher frequencies. But again, most accurate measurements and most conductivity measurements with this probe are done at 60 kilohertz. Uh, we also have a smaller diameter probe for uh, measuring parts with tight radius curvature things where the, the probe doesn't fit flat onto the part like it does here. Uh, that's very important. If there's curvature to the material and the probe isn't fitting flat, it will tend to uh, throw off the reading. And there are charts that can be used to compensate for that. If you know the radius of the material and you, uh, you know the probe very well, there are charts that you can use to compensate for that. Um, but the other trick is to use a smaller diameter probe and the smaller diameter probes typically like to uh, be run at 480 kilohertz or even 960. 
and those are available on the second panel of the conductivity app. We have a second panel for a small probe as opposed to the first panel for the large probe. All right, so that is, uh, there's also a, a panel at the beginning of this app uh, that gives you information on conductivity measurements, uh, some of the physics behind it, uh, some things to watch out for when taking accurate measurements. So with that, we'll wrap up our, our uh, installment on conductivity. Thank you for joining me. Again, I'm Dan Groninger for GE Inspection Technology.